गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल बी लर्निंग फंक्शंस इन जावा विद द रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट सो गाइस वी ऑलरेडी नो व्हाट फंक्शंस आर एंड वी हैड बीन यूजिंग फंक्शंस इन ऑल द जावा प्रोग्राम्स वी हैव क्रिएटेड टिल नाउ सो वी विल बी लुकिंग इनटू डिटेल हाउ डू वी यूज इट विद द रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट एंड व्हाट एक्चुअली फंक्शंस आर यूज्ड फॉर राइट सो गाइस इन जावा फंक्शंस आर आल्सो नोन एज मेथड्स इन सम लैंग्वेजेस इट इज नोन एज प्रोसीजर और सब रूटीन एंड वेयर एज इन जावा इट इज नोन एज फंक्शंस एंड मेथड्स बोथ आर फिजिबल इन java so let's understand what is a function first so methods are the lines of code that performs a specific function on in a program for example let's say i have a printer now a printer has a specific task to perform that it gives us a gives a gives us a hard copy copy of the uh, whatever file we pass to it whether it is a pdf whether it is an image whether it is a word document or maybe anything else okay so the main function of the printer is to give us the hard copy which we can feel and touch right so methods can ret either return a value or not return anything so they can either return a value we will be looking into return a value what is returning a value much in detail later and if they do not return anything they are of type void that means they do not return anything and the main advantage of method in a program is code reusability now what is code reusability we will look into the next slide and then we will have a better understanding of that now see over here you have to create a program let's say to build this image right now if i carefully watch this image i have two squares of the same size and there is a line in between maybe let's say its length is uh, around 3 uh, cm or 4 3 cm okay so i have to make a square and then i have to give a line in, in between of 3 cm and i have to rebuild the square okay so instead of rebuilding it what i do is i just make the square and then i make a line of around 3 cm and then i copy and paste this same square over here so copy and pasting what does copy and pasting means that means i have created this function and now i am reusing it right so that is why we need a function function is actually used in the same manner we create a function and then we reuse it okay so if we have to do it 10 times or 20 times in the program we will not cre keep creating the functions again and again instead of that we will create it once and we will call it again and again now what is calling and uh, calling a function we will be looking into that later okay let's first understand how do the uh, how how's the syntax breakdown of, of a java method done okay so over here if i say the java method is written as something like this public static void add these are the parameters which i have passed to it as int x and int y right so now the main is a function the function has the name that is like over here it is given add add is the name of the function now if i'm talking about the return type the return type is void the parameters are x and y x and y are the parameters and public is your modifier that is your public private protected we had seen about this in the initial vid videos so all this is a part of your method signature right so when i'm talking about a method signature it is basically the uh, parameters which i have passed to it along with the function name and along with the uh, this uh, your uh, um, public static void main so over here again i'm repeating so the method signature comprises of the method name the parameter list together and it it does not include the return type it may include or it may not include and the exceptions as well so if i have public static void int x comma int y int y and then you have over here throws io exception and we as we had done so it it will not include throws io exception so the method signature only comprises of the function name and the parameter list together okay so when we create a function basically children after that it is always uh, having the fun method uh, name then the method body and then then the method body is within the curly braces right so we create a function and after that we give the curly braces and wherein we write down the definition of the function so let's see how do we do it now over here return statement is what i told you that return means something is getting back to me 
right some somebody is returning something to me that means i am giving you a book and you are giving me some money in return so you are returning me something okay so in the same way the return statement works a return statement causes the program control to transfer back to the caller of the method every method in java is declared with a return type and it's mandatory for all java methods a return type may be a primitive type like int float double a reference type or void type so that void means returns nothing so guys over here i what i mean to say by a return statement is that every java method has to have a return type okay i cannot declare any java method which is not having a return type if it is not return in anything, anything then it should return a void okay otherwise it should return any kind of data type it could be any primitive data type int float double a reference data type a reference type you will be learning much in detail later in the further classes or a void type okay so this is all about return statement and there are few uh, important things to understand about returning the values the type of data returned by a method must be compatible with the return type specified by the method for instance if the return type of some method is boolean we cannot return an integer now guys if i am asking you that uh, you have to do your these programs so uh, who's asking is is the english teacher asking or is the computer teacher asking if it is a english teacher you will obviously submit her the english work right you will not submit her your computer work if it is your computer teacher you will submit her the computer work right so in the same manner the return type of the is should be compatible with the specified method now like your work submitted should be compatible with the teacher who has given the work okay or maybe the assignment which you have been given there are so many assignments you have give, been given right so you will submit your assignment to bio assignment to the bio, biology teacher your chemistry assignment your to the chemistry teacher you will not jumble them up you will not send a chemistry assignment to the bio teacher no because they are not compatible with each other in the same way you have to if a function is returning a boolean value it it should return a boolean okay the return type if if it is boolean then it should return a boolean it cannot be an integer okay so a uh, the variable receiving the value returned by a method must also be compatible with the return type specified for the method let's say you come to the computer lab and i am not there okay so you will hand over to the uh, the notebooks to any person who is from the computer lab right and you will tell give it to uh, uh, ma'am okay so over here the person who will be there should be of the same type okay that means he should be also a computer lab person okay in the same manner like you have over here the variable receiving the value the variable which will be receiving the value which is returned by the method method should also be compatible with the return type specified for the method okay the parameters can be passed in a sequence and they must be accepted by the method in the same sequence so parameters can be passed in any sequence okay so if it is int and float then in the uh, while you are uh, actually passing the parameters they sh it should also accept an int and a float okay it should be passed in the same sequence right so let's see further now see i was uh, i had used the word as called function in the previous uh, uh, slides now let's understand now over here this is a uh, program in which uh, a function has been created as check palin which is actually checking for the super palindrome and uh, we have created another function as reverse over here i have taken the return type as int so let's not understand the program first of all let's understand what is calling and called functions right now over here guys i have uh, passed an integer i have input a value and that value is being passed to the reverse function as n okay now this value n goes in the variable m the arrow has been placed uh, upright it, the uh, this arrow should have been here okay all both these arrows should have been here from here the value goes here okay sorry over here i have taken this okay so from here the value goes here when it goes here 
it is executed and now the same value the return s return s is actually being returned to the variable a okay so the value is passed from here and this return s is returning a an integer so over here what i meant by the data type same means the function is returning an int so the data type of this variable should also an, be an int and the variable which is storing this should also be an int so over here a is also an int right the value is being passed from here to the reverse function and this value n is being stored in the variable m the thing is calculated process whatever is being done over here and a value is being returned so when this value is being returned children you have to see that the s should have the same data type as the return type of the function so if it is returning a boolean s should be boolean if it is returning an int s should be int if it is returning a float s should be float and that way it should go on okay now the the function or the sorry the variable to which the value is being returned so the value which is being returned is getting stored in the variable a now what is the value of a it is also an int okay sorry the data type of a is also an int and the data type of b is also an int if it is not the same then it will give you an incompatible data type error right so this is what i meant by saying the return types should be the same the return type of the function the value which is being returned and the variable in which the value is being returned should all be the same okay and now let's understand the concept of calling function and call function so if i say rohan get up and come here so who's calling me and who's being called rohan okay so it's as simple as that when i'm saying calling function check palin is the calling function and the check palin function is calling the reverse function so the called function is the reverse function and the calling function is the check palin function okay so let's understand it more in detail now guys there is a question as create a function reverse int int means that it is taking an integer argument that takes an integer argument and returns the reverse of the number to the function check palin that actually inputs a number and checks whether the number accepted is a super palindrome or not now over here guys i have created the function see you know in uh, what is a super palindrome if you do not know what is a super palindrome you can go uh, and check your uh, the previous uh, video in which it is explained in detail what is a super palindrome and if you remember in the previous video i had created this while function twice that was purposely done in order to make you explain this uh, functions okay so over there the function was being repeated again so i had uh, used the same program over here but in this case the uh, reuse reusability of code is being applicable over here and i have created this code once and i'm reusing it twice so reverse function is being called twice one for the number and one for the square of the number okay so we need the reverse for a super palindrome we need the reverse of the number and the reverse of the uh, square as well okay so the two times the reverse has to be done so in one time i am passing the value as n that is the number original number and the other time i am passing the square i have calculated the square in the variable n1 and i am reversing it so over here the reverse function is being reused again that is twice it is being called okay so if it is being called twice it is going to in one time it is getting stored in the variable a and the other time it is getting stored in the variable b now according to the super palindrome the definition says that a super palindrome is a palindrome in which uh, uh, is, is is a number uh, which is a palindrome and its square is also a palindrome right so if i am talking about 11 Eleven is a super palindrome. Why? Because eleven. If I reverse eleven, it is a palindrome. And if I take out the square of eleven, that is one twenty one. So that is also a super palindrome. So when I reverse one twenty one, it is also one twenty one. So that is also a palindrome. So eleven is a super palindrome. So let's see over here. Now the value is being passed. When the value gets passed, it returns a value. That return value is being stored in the variable a, and over here the returned value is being stored in the variable b. Now it is checking for a equal to equal to n. A if the original number 
original number is equal to the reversed number and if the original square is equal to the reverse square so then it is a super palindrome otherwise it is not a super palindrome so this is the output which i have when i'm entering 11 it is a super palindrome but when i'm entering 12 it is not a super palindrome let's see another example now over here i have to create a function cof that takes an integer argument and returns the count of factors to the function twin prime that actually inputs two integers and checks whether the numbers pass are twin prime or not so now over here guys twin prime is the number which is uh, having a which is a prime number but having a difference of, of two let let's say there are two numbers which are prime and they have a difference of uh, two in between them so they then they are called a twin prime pair okay so in that case that means i have to check for two numbers and both the numbers should be twin uh, should be prime number and the second condition should be that they should have a difference of two so guys over here I have input a number as num1 and another number as num2. Now this is a function which I have created cof which gives us a count of factors. So I am passing num1 to cof. So when I say cof num1 the control passes to cof the num1 value goes into int y it processes this what and what is done in the processing it is giving the count of factors. You know how to find the factors if you do not know how to find the factors kindly check the previous for loop videos in which uh, it is mentioned how to count the factors now return c is actually returning the count of the factors now c this c is having the same data type int which is the function returning so the function is returning an int this c is also an int and the value which is being uh, uh, which is storing it is should also be an int so over here a is also an int now cof uh, a is uh, uh, is having the number of factors of num1 and b will be having the number of factors of num2 okay so over here i've taken a variable d match dot abs is equal to num1 minus num2 now you would be thinking why i've taken uh, match dot uh, abs this is to find the difference i could see that uh, it could be that i uh, input the number uh, first number as 5 and the second number is 7 so in that case the difference would be minus 2 okay so num1 minus num2 would be minus 2 but i want an absolute value of that number in order to check whether the difference is 2 okay so that is why i have created as num1 minus num2 whatever value it may be it may be positive it may be negative so whatever it is it will convert it into an abs absolute value and store it in the variable d so over here i am checking that d is equal to equal to 2 that means the difference between the two numbers is 2 and the number of factors the of num1 should also be 2 and num2 should also be 2 so if the number is a prime number when the it has two factors one is itself and the other is number one okay so over here i have counted the number of factors i have returned the value in the variable a and the variable b so if a is equal to equal to 2 b is equal to equal to 2 and d is equal to equal to 2 then it is twin prime otherwise it is not twin prime so i have taken various examples over here in the in output 2 and 8 are not twin prime input the first number 59 and 61 both are twin prime because this is a prime number this is a prime number difference is 2 if i am taking 13 11 this is a prime number this is a prime number difference is 2 okay if i am taking 5 and 7 now over here see 5 is bigger 7 is smaller even here 59 is big uh, sorry smaller 61 is bigger so difference is minus 2 over here also difference is minus 2 so in that case this math dot abs function will work and it will take out the number as 2 difference is 2 and then it will give it that they are twin prime okay so this is how we go about it now over here this is a worksheet which you have to do so create a function find factorial that accepts an integer argument and calculates the factorial of a number and re returns it to the function check special which checks whether the argument passed is a special number or not now you know how to find the factorial of a number right so you will find the factorial return it and the check special function will check it okay and in the same way you have to do this question so guys if you have any doubts in this video kindly write to me in the comment section and if you have not subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe to my channel by clicking on the bell icon and if you like my video click on the like button and that's all for today 
थैंक यू एंड हैव अ नाइस डे एंड हैव अ गुड क्रिसमस ब्रेक अहेड